This is the MG5 Trophy. You may remember the MG4, which we've already done a review on, but what do you think of this? It comes in just over £33,000 and it's the world's only fully electric estate car. It's in cosmic silver and I'm a fan. This is the Arnold Clark YouTube channel. I'm Duncan Vincent. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that little bell icon so you never miss an upload from us. The front end of the MG5 Trophy has been completely redesigned by MG. They've given it effectively a facelift, a well-needed facelift as well. First of all, let's start with the splitter and the grill down the bottom, very reminiscent of what we saw on the MG4. If you want to check out that video, just have a look in the top corner of the screen, you can click on that link. Redesigned headlights that have a lovely chrome bar that goes across the front as well. Unfortunately, it's not a light bar, and we all know how much I like light bars, but it does look really nice. Charging point is here. Very easy to get to and open, and just below that, you've got your 360 camera, which gives you great vision. That's the front of the car, let's go and take a look down the side. Even the side of the car has been given a refresh by the MG designers. Look, there's lovely flowing lines down it, the bottom, nice crease in the doors. Chrome door handles, chrome around the windows, and privacy glass as well. Big roof bars, and a big set of door mirrors. In the door mirrors, blind spot detection camera, you indicate up on the dash, you see your blind spot, nice and safe. 17 inch alloy wheels in this car come as standard on the MG Trophy. Let's jump in the back. The back of the car has been completely redesigned like the rest of the car. There's much nicer lights, there's details in the bumper, and there's almost a little bit of a diffuser happening along the bottom here as well. The reversing camera is parked just up here, and we don't have a light bar, but we have a chrome bar going across the middle here. To open the boot, I've got to use my hand, which in this channel, it's not an occurrence. I've went a lot off, and there's your boot. 578 litres of space if you pack it from the floor to the roof. Put the seats flat, you then get 1,367 litres of loading space. That's huge, because remember, this is the only fully electric EV estate car on the market. Let's jump inside. First things first, when you get in the car, I like the seating position, I can get it really comfortable for myself. There's a footrest down there next to a couple of pedals, and the seat's quite comfortable fully adjustable electric heated front seats but for some reason the passenger seat's not electrically adjusted you do that manually the steering wheel it's a nice size but um, i'm not really fond of the actual feel of it. it feels a little bit plasticky but the size and the girth of it is actually quite nice the fully digital dash and the information panel they're nice and big and they're very easy to use and there's not really much blue outside the car did you notice that there's a little bit in the headlights there's a bit in the rear badge but then you come inside here and you start to notice all these blue details the stitching the line through the dashboard it goes through the air vents along the door it's even highlighted in the menu system i quite like that it's just something different nice and easy to use driving controls as well you've got your parking brakes here you've got the modes that you can select you've got eco comfort and sport and there's even cares which is kind of a, a look at formula one style for your recovery mode the one speed drivetrain, reverse, neutral and drive, couldn't be easier to use. And right in the middle, you've got the parking brake. There's a big bin down here, a couple of charging points and more storage back here as well. And the glove box, well, it's a decent size should you need to have your driving gloves kept in that box. But yeah, ultimately, I quite like it. It's comfortable. Um, just a shame we don't have a powered seat across there. One thing I was really impressed with with the MG4 was the MG Pilot, which enables you to be safer when you're driving and it's got a whole lot of great modes in this one here. For instance, you've got alert sensitivity, audible warnings as well if you want them to come back through. You've got the speed warning, lane departure. I like this one though, traffic jam assistance system. I could really do with that. The amount of motorways I go through, the amount of traffic jams and motorways, MG Pilot would be well up in my list of big thumbs up. But yeah, well done MG, I like that. You've also got convenience, you've got lighting, and a whole host of other great functions in that system. If you want to check on your car or keep an eye on it, there's an app as well. It's called MGI Smart. You can set things up on it, like find the nearest charging station, or you can also predetermine your climate controls for when you come back to the car. So, well done, MG. That's a great idea. Let's jump in the back. In the back of the car, it's actually quite spacious. Uh, you've still got the lovely blue accent and details that goes through the seats here, and you've got a lovely place for you to have your armrest and a drink if you want it. My feet feel a little bit high, that is one strange thing, it does feel a bit strange that, um, but the seats are actually comfortable. Isofixes are nice and easy to get to for mums, dads and grandparents, and down here 
couple of charging points, USB standard and a USB-C, so you've got a choice of things there. This could be the ultimate road trip car, it really could. If there was just a little bit more room here for you to sit in, and a little bit more range, this could be a game changer for road tripping, especially with the size of that boot. Let's go drive it. So first impressions, driving along the motorway here. Oh, feels lovely, yeah. Um, remember I said I wasn't convinced about the steering wheel earlier on, I'm still not convinced. The stitching, where my thumbs go, you're actually rubbing the rubbing stitching, it's a little bit annoying. Um, apart from that though, I mean, I'm splitting hairs here, haven't I? I keep glancing down to my range. I think I'm giving myself range anxiety, and I shouldn't be. It's just because I'm new to driving EVs, that's it though. Comfortable, the road noise, very, very low. Wind noise, hardly anything to tell you the truth. And the steering feels incredibly light. Staying on that range anxiety kind of theme, you know, you find yourself a rapid charger, 150 kilowatt rapid charger, from 10 to 80% in this. How long do you think? What do you think? Only 35 minutes, so that takes a lot of charge very quickly. Performance of the car gives you, well, you've got over 150 brake horsepower, which is pretty impressive. It does not to 62 miles per hour in 7.7 .7 seconds. One thing you will notice if you accelerate away from a junction quite hard, it does spin the wheels. It's got quite a bit of torque, as all electric cars do. So you've got to watch out for that. Quite nippy. On the motorway though, it cruises along at motorway speed effortlessly. And, again, the range, I keep an eye on that, it doesn't go down as quickly as some cars. If you're doing motorway only miles, you'll get 193 miles out of full charge. If you're doing a little bit of everything, you know, kids to school, motorway, rural, whatever it is, you're looking at 235 for that. Now, take the charging time into consideration. You know, if you stick it on a rapid charger and you could dump 80% charge into the batteries in that small amount of time, 35 minutes, this could be the ultimate plug and play car. Could be a game changer for people who do long journeys up and down the country. On the motorway, I've seen quite a few MG4s going about. I haven't seen any MG5 trophies though. That's something that I've still to see. Do you like the four or the five? Where do you sit on that? It'd be nice for you guys to let us know. Drop us a comment in the box below and tell us are you a four or a five kind of person. Adaptive cruise control and lane assist means that you can just feel the steering wheel just giving you tiny gentle tugs if you stray towards one of the white lines. Now I'm not saying that you can take your hands off the steering wheel and let the car drive for you, I'm not saying that, but it feels like you almost can. The adaptive cruise control as well is brilliant, we're sitting 70 miles per hour national speed limit and it's effortlessly doing that and it accelerates and brakes and goes with the flow of the traffic. Well done MG. It's a little bit warm today, and one of the lovely good key features in this car is auto air conditioning. So pop that on, there it is straight away. Brings the temperature down inside. Lovely. Just lovely. So that comment I made earlier on about this being the only estate EV on the market, maybe it's not technically true. Yeah, I'll be getting a bit of hate in the comments box below, I would imagine, because there is a Porsche take on, I know that, but really, this is so inexpensive compared to the Porsche. And it's got everything you need. The space in the back, the range, the rapid charging. Right now I'm on Max Regen, or CARES, as it's called in this little toggle switch down here. Kinetic Energy Recovery System. Formula One S. Remember CARES in Formula One? So right now we're on the maximum one. It's not one pedal driving by any way, shape or form, but it has got quite a high retardation on the car. Let's pop that down to one. And going down this hill, you, you feel nothing but it is still taking a little bit back. And it's good you've got a counter on the right hand side of your instrument panel, which says right now I'm dumping 15% battery back into the battery. So technically I'm upping my own range. The anxiety is disappearing, I'm feeling happy. It's also got that traditional EV whine, the noise that the cars make when you're going along the road, but you actually hear it inside the car quite a bit as well. And it seems to get higher and higher and higher pitched to where at some points it almost feels like a scream. Yeah, it's still there. Still there. The three modes on the MG5 Trophy have different degrees of steering sensitivity. Eco is very light, almost one finger steering. Comfort goes a little bit heavier, and in sports where it becomes its heaviest. It's a nice change for all three. I, I quite like Eco myself though, the, the nice light feeling, it's almost fingertip kind of driving.
We've done some motorway driving. We've been in a lovely country park and we're now in town. So it's the car is just faultless to drive. It's effortless, it's good fun. It doesn't feel out of place. And it's got quite a bit of punch when you need to accelerate away from a roundabout, a set of traffic lights or whatever's happening. The little MG5 Trophy can kind of deal with all its uh, situations it finds itself in. MG Pilot, a fabulous thing that the MG system has here. And I think a lot of it's more or less for motorway driving. So you've got traffic jam awareness, you've got frontal collision, you've got adaptive cruise control, which is always a great thing for motorway driving. But uh, it doesn't need to just be for motorway driving. It can be for town driving as well. Like this clown that's just stopped in front of us. The brakes of the car are good as well. They're very, very strong brakes, but there's a nice feel underneath the pedal. You do see a lot of people moaning about how brakes in electric cars are and they make noise and this and they don't feel good. Well, these just feel like any other car brakes. To me, there's a good feel to the pedal and they work, which is always a bonus when you're talking about brakes. The MG5 Trophy does come with vehicle to load. The same as what the MG4 did, remember that? And if you ever need to power something from it, such as a fridge, a washing machine, or you never know, a kettle, you might be stuck somewhere, you might be doing a cup of tea. Plug in, there you go. Well, that's my view of the MG5 Trophy. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, MG, they've done it again. They've absolutely nailed it. This estate car is a fabulous EV. Get yourself to an Arnold Clark dealership and see if you can get behind the wheel of one and see what you think. Do you agree with me? You can comment in the box below. Remember, like and subscribe to the Arnold Clark YouTube channel. I've been Duncan Vincent and hit that bell icon so you never miss one of the uploads from us again. Until next time guys, safe driving.